in an age where the electronic media has drawn us closer together in, into what is called a global village. Its benefit will only be felt when mutual goodness prevails. If instead of good feelings, hatred emerges, if restlessness deserves heartfelt, uh, heartfelt peace, then you must accept that this is not progress, but is something that will take you towards horrific destruction. Here I wish to make something very clear, and that is the relationship of mutual love, affection, and loyalty between one person and another cannot be established until a relationship of love, affection, and loyalty with the Lord who created us is developed. Distress and anxiety exist nowadays in a large part of the world's population because the world has forgotten its creator. People have forgotten the fundamental teachings of their faith. In fact, a great number of people even reject the existence of God. <clears throat> the founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has also taught us that the majority of Muslims and non-Muslims have forgotten their fundamental teachings and have gone far away from God. This growing distance from God and religion is increasing the restlessness in the hearts of people. And the, he said that he had come, therefore, to remove such distance so that the rights of God may be discharged and the rights of God's creation may also be discharged with feelings of love and sympathy. When these teachings are acted upon, when we will observe real peace, then we will observe real peace. Otherwise, agitation will once again bring about utter destruction in the world. <clears throat> With reference to peace, I would like to also say that turmoil and restlessness has spread all over the world. And every possible way to reduce it should be adopted. Instead of unnecessary interfering in the affairs of others and erecting walls of hatred, we should look to knock them down. The governments should not interfere where rights are not being violated. No laws should be proscribed regarding those matters that do not endanger the peace of the nation. Of course, where there is a threat to the peace of the nation, where there is a likelihood of harming the prosperity and progress of the nation, where the rights of citizens are unduly curtailed, and where a person is made a symbol of hate due to his religion, there the governments should interfere and, le and legislate. As I said before, and as you are all aware, the world has come together and the measures of distances have changed. And in every country, people of different religions live side by side. Therefore, it is necessary, and it is the need of the time, that within our cosmopolitan societies, the bond of love and affection should be strengthened. Respect and honor for one another should be inculcated. Allegiance to one's country should be infused amongst the entire society, and most importantly, the love of God be instilled into the hearts of the people. If these things are fostered, then they will 
guarantee harmony within each country and individual restlessness will be replaced by peace. <clears throat> Over the past few years, the hijab or veil has been made an issue in Europe. In France, in particular, uproar has been created. And now they are seriously considering legislation that would partially ban the hijab. Following on from France, politicians in other European countries and for their own political motives are issuing statements supporting a ban. And this is becoming a means of injuring the sentiments of Muslims. Whenever I have reflected on this matter, I have never been able to understand what the problem with the veil is, that it has become such a threat to governments. Is it such a heinous crime to wear a coat and cover one's head and chin with a piece of cloth, that an entire parliament should sit to pass a law against it? If it is prohibited for a woman to wear a cloth on her head, then why are men allowed to wear caps and bury on their heads? This means that tomorrow a ban could also be proposed against such caps. I saw a cartoon recently in a newspaper in which a lady wearing a veil was standing next to a young man wearing berry. The young man was saying to the woman, no burqa. And the woman was saying to the man, no berry. These issues thus have become a source of sarcasm. However, there are some sober-minded people in whose hands are the reins of the executive and legislature who should not interfere with such matters. Should le legislation be passed against Christian and Jewish ladies who also adopt religious attire? If bans are imposed against the Muslims, then Muslim countries may impose restrictions on some forms of Western dress in response. This issue has the potential to snowball and it will affect the peace of the world. By all means, if there is any covering that hides the identity of a person and it is necessary to remove it to identify a person, then the governments or the authorities has the right to do so. But what a travesty that a woman may be deprived from traveling simply because she is wearing the hijab. Or a human life may be deprived of care in a hospital and left in the jaws of death because she was wearing a veil. Then, for example, an intelligent girl who ranks at the top of her class, who is not just a Muslim, but an asset to the country in which she lives, is loyal to her country in every possible way. So much so that the love of her country is ingrained within her and she is willing to sacrifice all her skills and abilities for the sake of the progress of her country. And if this girl is prevented from carrying on her education only because she chose to observe hijab, not out of any compulsion, but due to her own free will, does this not render her bereft of her rights as a citizen? Will not this legislation that deprives her of education be the means of wasting national talent? This law has not yet been passed in Germany, but due to the bylaws available to the administration of some schools, 
an Ahmadi Muslim girl whom I know, who is among the top ranked, is being deprived of her education. And there are many examples like this. This national talent and the future of the country is being denied just because a Muslim girl wants to serve her country and at the same time wants to practice her religion of her own volition and happiness. A girl is being deprived of this right merely because she has a meter worth of cloth on her head.